opportunity to do kind of like a beginning of an education piece that we're gonna kind of continue throughout the six week challenge and then kind of go over the nuts and bolts of the rules of the challenge um, and also just kind of get everybody together so you can see who else is participating um, alongside with you. So you obviously have your partner, but don't forget you have the entire group to kind of work with. And I think the only two people who don't know their partners, Bill, Elise, Elise, Bill, y'all are together. And so, welcome, welcome. All right, Renee's gonna hit the buttons for me. So just a couple things we're gonna talk about today. Um, some goals, we're gonna set some goals and each of us talk to each of you about what your biggest challenges are, what does success look like six weeks from now, what is a long-term goal you might have, we're gonna go over the meal plans, how to use the HSN app, and my fitness plan. All right, but first we wanted to start by debunking a few of the common myths. Um, you cannot tone fat. So one of the things that I think people hear a lot is that I wanna tone up, I wanna tone up, and they think that this means that they're toning up fat. The reality is, in order to see the lean muscle that we have, what we're really doing is we're shedding body fat and we're gaining muscle, right? And so for this reason, regardless of what kind of exercise you're doing, we want to make sure that we're introducing some kind of strength training so that we're building muscle so that we can see that both aesthetically, we feel stronger, and performance increases in whatever activity we're doing. Eating less means losing weight. And this is something that I feel like um, is a really hard pill to swallow. We just feel like I should eat less, I should eat less, I should eat less if the goal is to lose body fat. But the truth is that our body needs a certain amount of calories in order to perform, in order to have energy, and truthfully, in order to process the macronutrients that we're eating and in order to lose weight. So for each of you, we've essentially come up with a, not just calorie goal, but a macronutrient goal based on your activity level and the conversations that we've had with you. And so your goal is really going to be for the next six weeks to trust us and try to nail those targets and eat enough, right? It's not gonna speed up the process by eating less. Just really hit those calories that we've kind of set aside for you. Carbs are bad. Not true, right? Carbs are the body's main source of energy and fuel. And so especially when you're doing CrossFit or move type workouts with us, right? They are going to be what fuel you and get you through that 30 minute workout, right? So we wanna make sure that we're feeding our body. Carbs are not bad. Fat is also not bad, right? Fat is what's going to help us stay satiated and full. It's also gonna regulate our hormones, right? And so fat is not bad either. What we find a lot of times as well is that when foods are eliminating fat, they're usually adding in um, other things that are processed and sugars, which are way worse for us than fat. And so for this reason, we're gonna balance carbs, fat, and protein in, in the meal plans that we give you. If I work out, I can eat anything I want. Man, I wish that was true. Um, and maybe if you're training three to six hours a day, maybe that is true. But for most of us, just trying to get in 30 to 60 minutes of movement a day, what we wanna do is that we wanna feed and fuel those workouts, um, but we're not gonna be able to undo any other, like we're not going to be able to undo in one hour what we've done the other 23 hours of the day. So food is meant as a fuel, not, not anything else. Losing weight means losing body fat. This is also not true. And so when we talk to you guys about setting specific goals, rather than saying something like, I'd like to lose weight, we'd rather focus that goal in on trying to lose body fat, right? Reason being, our weight can fluctuate five to even 10 pounds, right? Depending on how much water we've had, sodium intake, um, how much sleep we're getting, right? So rather than saying we wanna lose weight, We'd rather make it more specific, like losing body fat, because that's really what I think most of us, when we say we want to lose weight, are shooting for. So we want to be specific in our goals. So, just a couple of things to kind of keep in mind as we move forward. So, questions to ask yourself right now. Are you consistently eating three to four meals a day? If you're not, that's going to be one of the action steps we're going to try to move forward with. Do you balance your meals and snacks with protein, carbs, and fat? If all of our snacks are things like donuts or granola bars or even just fruit, which is a great snack, right? We're really just getting carbs or even then carbs and fat. So we're gonna try to encourage basically every single one of you to add a little bit more protein to your diet. Are you drinking 60 to 80 ounces of water a day? 
Coffee doesn't count. So if you're drinking 60, 80 ounces of coffee a day, right, we want to make a swap, add a little bit more water. It's going to help your body absorb all those macronutrients. Do you eat protein carbs around your workouts? Now, this is not the end all be all, right? What you're eating for the totality of the day work matters way more. But if we can have a little bit of protein and carb before and after workout, it's only going to make you feel better and improve recovery. How often are we eating out? And this includes takeout, and I understand that with COVID, maybe it's less, but either takeout or restaurants, we don't know what's in our food. So I hate to cook, but still, the more we can cook for ourselves, the more we know exactly what it is we're eating. Have you ever tracked your food or logged it? And this could be in a journal, this could be in an app like My Fitness Path. And this is not something that's meant to be forever, but it's so insightful as to what we're eating when we actually have to write it down or log it. And then we also get a better understanding of what macro macronutrients are in the foods that we're eating. So it's meant to be educational. And again, it's not meant to be forever. Do you focus more on quality or quantity? Ask yourself, are you somebody who eats really good quality foods but you just eat too much, you're going back for seconds and thirds, and you're eating the food off your wife or your kids' plates. Guilty sometimes. Um, or are you more of a quantity? The, the food that you eat is not very good, but you try to compensate by eating maybe only one or two meals a day. But the quality's not there. Which one are we really gonna dial in this next six weeks? And then what is your biggest challenge? And we ask every single one of you, what is your biggest challenge? And believe it or not, so many of you had that challenge that was similar. Some of you were stress eaters. Some of you don't get enough water. Some of you really struggle to sleep, right? Use our group app to kind of work together because if you find something that works for you, we're really hoping that you're solving each other's problems as well and maybe you're finding something that might work for somebody else. Um, what have you done in the past that's worked well for you? Because if there is something, well, let's go back to that. Let's use that a little bit. And if you've tried something before and you know that it didn't work for you, well, those are the things that we're gonna try and learn from and avoid. All right, so participation points. We basically, pull them all off, Renee. We have five pillars of health. Sleep, exercise, water, quality of food, and quantity of food. And so within our participation points, what we're really trying to do is hit those five pillars of health. So for exercise, we're gonna be open to this. We just wanna have 30 minutes of good movement where you would quantify it as exercise. So maybe it's a CrossFit workout, maybe it's a move workout, maybe it's a travel wad, maybe you're at another gym and you've done 30 minutes of strength training or something along those lines. Yes, it counts. If you go out hiking with your family and it's a strenuous hike, it counts, right? If you're walking your dog for the morning walk and it's 20, 30 minutes, if you wouldn't count it as exercise, we won't count it either, okay? Seven hours of sleep at night, dude, we could, I could talk to you for hours about sleep. It is the foundation of everything in your life, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it at, we're shooting for seven plus hours of sleep. If you're somebody who's getting five or six, maybe we're just trying to increase it in the beginning by 20 minutes, right? But ideally, by the end of the challenge, we want everybody sleeping somewhere between seven to eight hours of sleep of night. Um, 80 to 60 ounces of water a day. The 80 is for the men, the 60 is for the women. These are our targets. If you can go above and beyond that, even better. We're gonna log our food in my fitness pal. We've chosen this particular app because it links well with the HSN app. So it's gonna allow Renee and I to both see if you're hitting your targets, but also see what food you're eating so that we can make really specific recommendations of, hey, Bill, we know you need more fat. Let's add a little bit more dressing to that salad. Let's add some avocado, some nuts and seeds, things of that nature. Um, the next point is the quality of food. We're gonna shoot to eat clean. What that means to us is no processed food, no added sugar, and no alcohol. From there, three balanced meals a day. And in, in a couple minutes, Renee's gonna hand out to you these containers. But basically what we're looking for is every meal to have some veggies on it, to have some protein, to have some starchy carbs, and a little bit of fat. And then there will also be weekly opportunities for bonus points. Um, each week, we're gonna, Renee and I are gonna come to you with like a little educational piece about exercise, sleep, water, quality of food, quantity of food, um, questions that you have that we turn into educational pieces. And every week, there's gonna be kind of like a partner challenge. 
And this time around, we're also adding weekly prizes. So whatever team wins that weekly challenge also gets a weekly prize. Uh, all right. So again, five pillars of health, sleep and water, quality and quantity of food, and exercise. All right, first things first. In your folders, you have a packet. Um, what does it look like on the front right now? It's right here. Here somewhere. Oh, yeah, it says HSN on the front. And yeah, nope, that's your meal plan. Yes, what Shelly's holding up. HSN six week challenge. This is gonna kind of go through the presentation. And the first thing I wanna do is just open up and you'll see where it talks about setting goals. And when we set goals, we don't want it to simply be aesthetic and we don't want it to simply be objective based. And by that I mean, we don't wanna say, hey, I wanna lose 10 pounds. So much of that we don't necessarily have control over. So what we like to do is set one nutrition goal and one performance goal. We want these to be action based. So for my nutrition goal, maybe I'm saying, I want to focus in on eating whole unprocessed foods. Maybe it says, I want to eat clean for the entire six weeks. For my nutrition goal, Maybe my goal is to eat vegetables at every meal. Those would be fantastic, actionable, like nutrition goals, right? What happens at the end is gonna happen. But if you're doing the right habits, it's going to lead you in the direction you want to be. Then we want a performance goal, right? Maybe you wanna be able to run a mile. Maybe you wanna be able to pick up your kids. Maybe you wanna be able to sleep through the night, right? Anything that is performance based could be another great goal. And again, we want to create action steps that are going to lead us to that goal. So, if we're looking at realistically what can we see happen in the next six weeks, we just want everyone to have realistic expectations. So, we like to tell people that on average, it's realistic to lose one to one and a half pounds of body fat a week, which generally equates to one to one and a half or two percent of body fat over the course of the month. This is because body fat is going to be harder to lose than overall weight, right? So we just wanna go in realistic expectations, wanna have a nutrition goal and a performance goal in mind. So one of your first homework pieces over this weekend is going to be to set these realistic goals for yourself and the action steps that you're gonna to take to move towards them. So as we're setting the goals, we talked about what good goals look like, but we're also gonna talk about how we might set certain action steps, right? And so if your goal is to lose 20 pounds, or better yet, your goal is to eat whole, unprocessed quality foods, well then, action steps are how you're gonna get there. I'm only going to shop in the perimeter of the grocery store. I'm not going to buy anything that comes in a can or a box. I'm going to go to farmer's markets and buy fresh produce, right? These would be action steps that would get you towards that nutrition goal. If it's getting a pull, I'm going to work on, you know, pulling accessory work three times a week. Right, that's a great action step. I'm going to reach out to Kate and Renee and find some good accessory work that I can do. I'm gonna to commit to 20 minutes of accessory work on pulling, you know, once a week or two times a week, whatever it is. But action steps are meant to be just that, actionable. If we get the pull up by the end, great. If not, you know what? We're definitely closer than where we started, okay? So definitely between now and the end of this challenge, looking for a nutrition and a performance goal, and then three action steps that are hopefully going to, if not get us there, definitely move us forward. All right, so Renee is gonna hand out these containers to you. What we are gonna focus on in terms of nutrition is going to be the plate method. And this one might have jumped around for you a little bit, but the plate method is the simplest method that we can use to kind of change our eating habits. And I know that everybody's dinner plate's a little bit different, so we're also gonna give you these containers. You do not have to eat out of them, but you can definitely use them to kind of like measure or gauge your food, okay? I know that not everybody wants to weigh their food, and that's okay, you don't have to, right? So if we wanna use the plate method, right, assuming a normal dinner size plate, what we're looking for is for half that plate to be veggies, so in your container, it would be the biggest portion would be filled with veggies, right? Um, any leafy greens, broccoli, cauliflower, spinach, green beans, right? All of these veggies. From there, a quarter of your plate is going to be protein, right? She's gonna shoot for some lean meats here. 
turkey, chicken, pork tenderloin, fish, or any kind of seafood. And that would be one of the smaller portions in your container. And then last but not least, one quarter of your plate is gonna be starchy carbs. There, there's no bad food here. Rice is okay, all right? Oatmeal is okay. Fruit is fantastic. Squash, we're heading into fall. There's some really good starchy carbs. White potatoes, sweet potatoes. We don't, we love them both. There, there's room for both at our table, okay? We're just gonna kind of focus in on the quantity portion of how much of these starchy carbs we're getting, okay? So, fat is gonna come in a tablespoon or a thumb size portion. Right, so there's no container for it, but we definitely want to have some fat in at each of these meals, okay? So your plate method is gonna be half veggie, quarter protein, quarter starch, thumb size fat. Your meal plans are built this way, and when we're logging food in our MyFitnessPal, by logging it in, hopefully you're seeing this, you know, 30% carbs, 30% protein, and then, uh, I'm sorry, 30% fat, 30% protein, 40% carbs. All right, so we've talked a little bit about three macronutrients. In your um, packets that you have, you have this really like colorful sheet, it's in the, Shelly, if you wanna flip what you have in your hand over, I'm still in that same packet. Yeah, Scott's holding it up. That might be a good thing for you to have in front of you right now, because as I talk about each of these macronutrients, there's almost, almost, nothing that you can't have that's a whole food. There's nothing you can't have that's a whole food, but, we want to be more inclusive. So rather than thinking of the things you can't have on this challenge, let's focus in on the foods we've never tried before or the ways we've never cooked them that maybe if we added them in could be really good staples from here until the end of time, okay? So let's start with protein. A quarter of our plate and 30% is going to be protein. In the top left-hand corner, you're going to see that it's green, yellow, and red. The colors refer to how much fat are in each of those protein sources. So more or less, we want to keep two times a day to that green section, that lean, healthy proteins. Maybe that's whey, maybe that's uh, turkey, chicken, fish, any of those. And the reason that really, really we want to increase everybody's protein to 30% a day is because protein is made of amino acids and those amino acids are going to absolutely help you build skeletal muscle. We want muscle, again, because aesthetically, I think you're gonna like how it looks. Two, it's gonna make you stronger. But three, muscle burns calories while you're at rest. Long story short, the more muscle you have, think the big guy in the back, the more calories you burn, even at rest, right? So by having a little bit of muscle, just a little bit, right, it's gonna burn more calories even while you're not working out, even while at rest, okay? So we're gonna shoot for lean sources of protein, two of those green ones a day, and then maybe have one from that yellow moderate category, or if you like bacon and what's in the red column, go ahead and have a little bit of that too, okay? Here's one thing we do wanna keep in mind, right? Good source, good source, good source, peanut butter. Peanut butter is absolutely okay to have on this challenge. You can have it in moderation. But peanut butter, even though it does have some protein in it, peanut butter is a fat. So we're gonna keep it to the table science portion as opposed to, you know, the big container size portion. Maybe we sit down with a spoon and then next thing you know, half that jar is gone. All right, carbs. We definitely need our carbs. And if you look a little bit further down, you're gonna see that there's both vegetables, which are green. Those are basically unlimited, infinity amounts of vegetables. But when we get down, to like where it says the potatoes and the rice and the fruit, those starchier carbs, we're gonna try to keep to 40% of our daily intake or that little container at three to four of our meals, right? Now again, carbs are our body's fuel source, our body's energy source, right? So we absolutely wanna have them, but we're gonna try and get them from fruit, right? Which is great. We're gonna try and get it from rice and potatoes and oatmeal and squash um, and all of those kinds of sources. And again, shop that area of the grocery store which has those whole unprocessed foods, right? So we're looking for foods that, carbohydrates at least, that don't have that added or processed sugar. Right? So again, our favorable carbohydrates that are unlimited would be like broccoli, carrots, asparagus, 
polyphenol. Anything in that vegetable column, infinity. Go nuts. If you're hungry, just have as many of those as you want. But when it comes to our starchier complex carbs, our fruits, our sweet potatoes, peas, corn, acorn squash, for starches like brown rice, quinoa, oatmeal, and beans, those are what we're gonna try and keep to the smaller container, okay? And again, we're gonna avoid the added sugar in the next six weeks. All right, last but not least, fat, right? You need fat to keep it satiated, right? It takes the longest of any of the macronutrients to break down, so fat keeps us full, okay? But we wanna keep it to about 30% of our diet, and we wanna try and get it from, again, whole unprocessed foods, avocados, nuts and seeds, olive oil, coconut oil, um, avocado oil, great sources of healthy fats. Um, they're gonna make your hair longer, your nails stronger, your skin better. So many benefits from good healthy fats. Here's again the thing we need to keep in mind. Fat, gram for gram, is gonna be nine calories. Our other two macronutrients, gram for gram, are gonna be four calories. So when it comes to fat, we just wanna have it in moderation. So a tablespoon at every meal, right? Um, and then maybe a little bit at our snacks. But because we can overeat fat, it's super yummy, we're gonna, again, try to limit the quantity to proportional with the other macronutrients. And again, we're gonna avoid the fried fatty foods, right, that come with takeout for the next six weeks. All right, so reshaping our plate. Again, little recap here. We're gonna load up on whole foods. We're gonna look for whole grains, fruits, vegetables, things that provide fiber. In your MyFitnessPal, you'll see that there is a fiber component. Women are trying to hit 25. Guys, 30 to 35 grams of fiber. It's gonna keep you feeling really good. Real food above and beyond else should be our main goal, right? And we're gonna try and choose, again, those leaner cuts of meats. Chicken, turkey, fish come with the best sources. And we're gonna watch out for added, uh, added fats. We're gonna try and cook our foods mostly with coconut, avocado, or olive oil, right? In terms of this challenge, dairy is not a bad thing, but we want to limit the fatty forms of dairy, right? And kind of just simply allow the wholer sources of dairy. So for this challenge, right, dairy can include Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, and for my coffee drinkers, we're gonna limit it to like a tablespoon of cream, half and half, something like that per day, okay? Cheese is not the enemy, cheese is not bad, but like I mentioned before, gram for gram, cheese is a fat, we've got nine calories per gram. It's just something that's very easy to overeat, so for the next six weeks, we can kind of avoid it and then bring it back in moderation. We're gonna just see better results, okay? But Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, great options. And again, let's use this chart here to include more foods. Trying to be more inclusive here, as opposed to thinking about the things we can't eat. All right, and then last but not least, before I turn it over to Renee, we're gonna try and watch out for the sugar. Many of the processed foods have hidden sugars, and this any, is anything from like tomato sauce, where Prego is gonna add sugar, but things like Classico don't. There's gonna be easy swaps there, right? Salad dressings, um, like Kraft, are gonna add sugar, but the Bolt House is absolutely fine to have on the challenge that don't have added sugar. So we're gonna learn to read our labels, and we're gonna try to avoid any food that has added sugar. Keep in mind, if you look on the back of like a yogurt, which Renee's gonna pass out a couple of snacks to you now, because we're figuring you're getting hungry, those are gonna have sugars included because lactose has sugar in it, that's okay. Fruit has sugar in it, it's a natural sugar, that's okay. We're simply trying to avoid added sugar. And so as we kind of um, are gonna look at a couple of the foods that we're gonna hand out to you now, gonna get better at reading some of these labels. Um, we're also going to avoid the processed junk and basically try our best to shop the perimeter of the grocery store. Fruits, veggies, lean cuts of meats, and unprocessed foods. So we're gonna kind of look at a couple of labels and what's the difference kind of between an added sugar and a natural sugar and what we want our labels to look at. So we got a bunch of our expires we're gonna hand out to you guys. We've got coconut chocolate. These are okay to have in the challenge, by the way. Peanut butter chocolate. Can you tell I like chocolate? Chocolate sea salt. Um, a mixed berry, if you're not into chocolate. 
Let's see. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, in terms of like looking at the wrapper, the reason why we like these RX bars, right, and one that is approved on the challenge, all the ingredients are right on the front: egg whites, almonds, cashews, dates, and that's it. No added ingredients, and that's really what we're shooting for. Okay. Now, if you look on the back, and this is important, you'll notice that it's 210 calories. It's, it's total fat, seven grams. Total carbs, 24 grams. And protein, 12 grams. So please understand that if you're hungry, this is not gonna fill you up the way that real whole food will. But we understand that sometimes life happens. We simply want you to make better choices when you can't make the best choices, right? So if we're gonna try some bars, the ones we're gonna approve on this particular challenge are gonna be these RX bars, and they have kid-sized versions if you want something smaller and don't wanna waste two 10 calories on something this big. Perfect bars, which you're gonna find in the refrigerated section. They're usually made with almond butter or peanut butter, so they're gonna be a little bit higher in fat but they're also okay, the ones that have no added sugar. One or Quest Bars, which do have sucralose, so keep in mind if your stomach is not happy with that, um, just keep that in mind as well, but those will be allowed, any of these, one per day. And the reason we're limiting them is because we really want you eating real food as much as possible, and if all we're eating is bars, we're gonna be hungry, okay? But keep in mind, right? Notice it has 15 grams of sugar. That comes from the dates. It's still real food, right? It's a natural form of sugar, so we're gonna try and limit it to this. When it comes to the yogurts, now, any plain yogurt is acceptable, right? Any brand of plain yogurt. But a lot of the other yogurts, YoPlay and things like that, they're adding a lot of sugar, especially the ones that have fruit, right? So for us, we really like the triple oikos. It's 0% fat. That said, if you like the 2%, the 5%, go for it. Total fat, go for it. Again, don't fear the fat. But we like the triple oikos. They come singularly or in the big containers. They have every flavor known to man. Salted caramel, banana, raspberry, blueberry, banana chocolate. I mean, they can be a really nice, good little snack and treat. You can add some real, real fruit to it, and it's way better for you. So in terms of snack options, we get this question a lot. These are two good options, but if you ever have any questions, just reach out to either myself or Renee. So again, we're gonna hold on to the wrappers of these RX bars, because Renee is gonna jump up, talk to you about um, using the app for HSN and the MyFitnessPal, and we're gonna show you how to like log some of these things. So hang on to that wrapper. You're up, girlfriend. Okay, so if you guys want to open up your folders, and I think on the left, in the left side pocket, yes, there. Yes, I'm using the tool, but I uploaded it to my last footage. New York, New York, New York, not in there, but it is on your app. I'm going to keep that and get it to this one. So if you want to pull that out, this you will also be able to access on the app. I know some of you might have already seen that. Yes, it's all up. 
So on the front of that, as you can see, all right, we put your short-term, long-term goals. We've also written out your macronutrient breakdown. So your protein is for the P, carbs is for the C, and then fat, and then how many calories, okay? Um, in here, you have four weeks of a meal plan, okay? Monday through Sunday, every day is a little bit different. It's not meant for you to follow every single day Specifically, Monday you have to eat Monday, Tuesday you have to eat Tuesday. Okay, what we want you guys to do is pick and choose these different meals. Maybe you're gonna plan Monday's breakfast for Monday through Thursday, right? So that way you're not prepping something different every single day. So choose maybe three to four of these meals or staple meals um, that you can use throughout the week. What you want to be conscious of is if you're having, the way it works is if you're having, um, we don't want you to sub dinner at the bottom for a lunch because the calories are specific and written out throughout the day. So that way you're getting those macronutrients and hitting those calories. So make sure that lunch is a lunch. You can swap horizontally, um, not vertically, okay? Does that all make sense as you guys are looking through all of that. Um, cool. All right, so anything that you see on there that's hyperlinked, you'll be able to access that as a recipe, um, and it'll bring you to that recipe. It'll show you the breakdown, macronutrient breakdown for that um, when you get to it on your app. A um, couple of things to keep in mind, though. Some of the recipes may include, like, sugar or honey. We're going to stay away from that during this challenge. All portion sizes are cooked, okay? Um, make sure again, we're prioritizing the veggies. So if, if you're feeling um, that maybe you're, you're super full or maybe you're feeling a little bit more hungry, go for those veggies. Um, and like I said, feel free to swap things as you need to. And make sure we're logging all of this in my fitness pal. All right, did everyone download my fitness pal app? Everyone's good? Okay, cool. So, a couple of things. Um, if you want to take a look at that nutrition label again on your um, perfect bar. Okay. So, just a couple of things to keep in mind, right, when we're entering in this food. Well, one, with something like this, you can just go ahead and scan it into your phone. It makes your life a lot easier, okay? If you're manually putting this in, take a look as you're reading your labels, what is the serving size, right? Because sometimes there's gonna be more than one. So you're gonna wanna make sure we're adjusting that number so that way you're eating the, you're calculating out the appropriate amount of food that you're actually eating, okay? So if the numbers look a little wonky and you're like, wow, I'm way over, make sure we're double checking that, okay? Um, make sure we're looking at your fat, Okay, these are the main sources we're trying to see. That fat, those carbohydrates, fiber, and that protein, okay? Now, let's actually have you guys open up my fitness pal. Give you guys a second. Cool, and if we have, kids get gearing up if we have trouble with this. All right, so we wanna make sure that when we are setting this up, it is macronutrient focused, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're all in, okay? Um, we're gonna go ahead and set up our macros. So you're gonna go to the top portion with the three dots. Do you want yours? Yeah, yeah. this is hard to do. Like. Yeah. screen you're on, the top three dots, make sure macronutrient focus, and if you have, um, if you're not paying for this, that's kind of the default to it, okay? Anybody have? So mine says calories? Yeah, it's a lot. Then it's a lot, three weeks ago, macro. Oh, but you can set your no, hold on, hold on, what? yeah. We're gonna set our goal. We just set your goal. 
go to the more three dots at the bottom. Yep. So in the first grade, go to more three dots at the bottom. And then you're going to go to goals. And then you're going to do calorie, carbs, protein, and popcorn. And that is free. So when we get to that window, that's where you're going to input what we have written on the front of your meal plan. Okay, so I'll give you guys a second to do that and we can come around and help you. Sometimes once you've shifted those numbers, it will auto-correct itself. You may have to do it um, a little bit a second time around. Okay, so we're going to All right, everybody all set with setting those calories and macros? Cool. Okay, the next thing I want you to go to is just hit diary at the bottom. Dear diary, okay? And if you select at the top your calories, might be in green, okay? The next screen that will pop up look, should look like this, okay, where you can see We all, we're, we're there. Hit nutrients. If you're not hit nutrients, the, the middle the middle button there. And then from there, you can see what how much, let's say you had logged food in there, okay? How much total you've eaten, what your goal is, and then what you have left, okay? So you can kind of use that to either plan your day, if you still have food left over, okay? How can we fill that to get it as close to that goal as, as possible? Okay. Questions about that? We all found that? Okay. Cool. Definitely want the nutrients over the other streams because the other streams are going to give you percentage. So if you haven't hugged your whole day yet, it might seem off. So the nutrient screen that you have in front of you right now is really going to be the most useful. Okay, so as far as logging my fitness in my fitness pal, okay, um, all of those, like I said, the recipes that we're using in HSN that were hyperlinked, you can find those easily when you do a search and just adjust how much your portion size is, and we can put it in, okay? So that's kind of the example on this side, all right? If we're not using that, try to use verified sources of food, so that's gonna be indicated with a green check mark, okay? Versus just some random food that's not verified. Um, healthy Steps Nutrition, it's not gonna have the green check mark, but if you search Healthy Steps Nutrition Official, that's what you're looking for, okay? And then if you had the meatloaf muffins, boom, easy day. <laughs> All right, so next we're gonna, Stay in my fitness pal. 
okay? Because this is how we're gonna be able to um, be able to see what you're eating. So we're gonna set some diary settings here. So I'm gonna have you guys go back to those three dots at the bottom. You're gonna hit more. And then from there, you're gonna scroll down to settings and then diary settings. Diary settings and then diary sharing. Then we're gonna go to friends only. Check mark at the top. Tell me if I'm going too fast. We're gonna go back to that main screen. We're gonna go to friends. And then you guys are going to, in the top, there's a uh, plus sign in the, in the top right hand corner. You're gonna input, or you're gonna send Kate and myself a request. Where it says email my fitness pal username. Yes, so you'll put in for our username right here. You have to do each one of us separately. Diary sharing. I'm going to get out of the way. Yeah, all Your name underneath as this sender. Yeah. My name, my name is Swan. Kate's a Swan. Yeah. Back when I was 16, I had an AOL account, friends. And he died. In Thailand, yes. Yours is actually already set for the diary sharing. Yep. We good? Give you guys another second. What's that? <laughs> so now we'll be able to see what you guys are eating. What you're logging. What you're logging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Cool. Okay. So, do I have to weigh my food, right? We want to try to keep this as accurate as possible. If you feel like you want to break out the scale and measure things to the T, um, we have a little cheat sheet. Kate's going to show you what that looks like. Um, for those of you who are like, yes, I want to make sure everything is exactly precise all about okay always <laughs> like hiding if you are not about that right you don't want to bring out the scale that's totally fine we can look to get things as accurate as possible using our um, hand portion guide which we have given you in your packets um, so looking for veggies to be about two fifth size Okay, um, our protein to be um, a palm size, right? And this is all located in there, right? Which is gonna give you around like four, six ounces. Um, and that is what you would log. We have your starch, which is the fifth size, and then that, that um, fat, which would be about a thumb size, okay? In your containers, those are about eight-ish ounces, okay, if we're using the, um, three compartment containers as well, okay? But again, if depending on how you feel about weighing and measuring, you can either go for it, go all in with the with breaking out a scale, or we can just, we can eyeball it, okay? Protein. Oh, yeah. and oh. underneath oh. on your sheet, yes. and for logging purposes, yes. it tells you yeah. how many ounces or grams about a fist is, so that you can log it as to what you eat. Okay, and again, Logging your food in MyFitnessPal, right, is, there's no, it's not, there's no perfection in that, okay? 
there's if there's going to be discrepancies. It's going to be off a little bit. Um, so let's try to get it as close to it as we can. Please, please. Yes. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Just to verify, when it's saying. says it on the front page of your meal plan. Does it? Okay, I think it does. <laughs> cooked. All portions are cooked. Got it. <laughs> Thank you. I'll get my brain showing how to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> All right, so the other app we're gonna be utilizing is the Healthy Steps Nutrition app that hopefully everybody has downloaded, set up your account, okay? A um, couple of things here. So we're going to use this for one, private messaging between you guys, myself, and Kate, okay? So if you have any specific questions for us that maybe you want to leave outside of a group, you can ask there, okay? Um, here we're also going to be sending you guys weekly videos, which should start today, right? They should start today, okay? Um, you should have gotten something. Um, just little, like, tips, tricks. Um, and then in our group messaging, this is where we'll be spitting out information to you guys as far as um, weekly challenges, weekly education tips, weekly videos. Um, if you want to communicate with the rest of the group there, like if you're feeling some sort of way and you want some extra support, feel free to, to type it in there um, because we're all doing this together, right? Yes, we have our partners, but utilize this entire group on these, during these next six weeks. If everybody wants to open it up, just for a second, make sure you find these three things. And then if you haven't yet connected your HSN app to MyFitnessPal, we can we'll, we'll also do that. Yeah. Oh, but just make yeah, sure yeah, you yeah. know where the private versus the group messaging is. And then all of the weekly videos are under training plan. Thank you. 
Yeah. Well, connect to my fitness pal. Right. You don't need to log yeah. with my Fitbit or any yeah. of those things. Right. Okay. Almost there, guys. Wait, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so you should have received one the um, first video, the training, um, like the kickoff. Okay, um, within the app, okay, you don't have to worry so much about logging workouts or anything like that. If you want to put your um, weight in there, some people like to utilize that. Um, but what we can see on um, our end is what you guys are eating. So like in this calendar, that's what's gonna pop up as far as the connection between MyFitnessPal and the Healthy Steps Nutrition app. So that's where we're able to see what your macros are, calories, etc. Okay, make sense? Cool. Okay, so recap and questions, all right? It's just some commonly, frequently asked questions that we get. Um, should I supplement with protein post-workout? Yes. So make sure you're logging it in my fitness pal to, because it does account for your um, protein goal of the day. Okay. Um, kill cliff or fuel for fires. Um, we're telling you to keep those around pre or post workout, but again, make sure we're logging that in my fitness pal. Okay. Um, amino acids, other electrolyte supplements. Okay. Again, we're going to use those around a workout, not just something you're just sipping throughout your day. Okay. Um, but again, make sure you're logging, right? You're putting it in your body, log your food. Log whatever you're putting in, okay? Um, creatine, okay? Not necessarily something that's needed, right? Um, but if you're somebody who your goal is to build muscle, maybe you're going to supplement and you maybe need to supplement with something, okay? Um, then we can use that. But again, these are supplements, okay? Let's try to really focus on you getting all of your um, nutrients from the food that you're eating, okay? Um, condiments. Yes, you can have condiments, but then again, it goes back to making sure we're reading our food labels, okay? Does it have any added sugar, right? Um, balsamic vinegar, that can have sugar on it, so make sure we're reading it, making sure the only ingredient is balsamic vinegar. Other vinegars are great, red wine, apple cider, mustard, hot sauces, all really good sources of condiments. We want to make sure things taste good, right? We're not telling you to omit salt and, and the sauces, just make sure you're reading the labels. Um, sweeteners, you know, honey, molasses, maple syrup, sugar, coconut sugar, any of those like healthy sugars, again, we're going to avoid all of that. Um, we are going to allow, though, stevia one tablespoon per day, okay? That's the only sweetener we're going to allow for this, okay? Again, read your labels, and again, like I said, some of those recipes in the Healthy Steps Nutrition app do have some of those things in them, so we're just going to omit them. Um, eating out, okay? When you're eating out, right, utilize the plate method, okay? Make sure you have a good source of lean protein on your plate. Half of your plate is veggies, and then maybe you're gonna ask for a baked potato, some rice, things to avoid or be cautious of are sauces. Sauces contain a lot of extra fat, probably some sugar. You don't know what they're putting in those ingredients, okay? So try to keep things as clean as possible, and um, as far as the portion, the quantity, use the plate method. Um, do, do, do. Coffee, tea, these are fine, okay? Um, but make sure we're, if you're somebody that puts um, 
stevia or cream or whatnot, that we are limiting that to that tablespoon. Okay, so some foods that we get like, what about these foods? Exactly what it says, okay. Um, so again, frequently asked about, if it's a vegetable, right, eat it. If it's a meat, we want to eat it, okay. We're not gonna, we're gonna avoid almond flour and coconut flour on this, okay. So no baked goods, right, healthy, paleo, what have you, baked goods. We're avoiding that vegetable oil, canola oil, let's opt for olive oil, avocado oil, good sources of oil there. If we're somebody who needs, or if we're gonna use cold cuts, okay? Great, easy source of protein there, right? Um, but make sure we're looking for um, no sugar added. So like Applegate Farms, I know, is a really great, great brand. Boar's Head, really great brand. Um, so opt for those. Try to stay away from the honey roasted or the maple glazed, right? Um, to avoid those sugars. But really, if you're somebody who's you know not into meal prepping and needs a quick snack or you're on the go, cold cuts are a great option. Um, nut butters, again, read your labels, okay? Make sure we're opting for either nuts only or nuts and sea salt, okay? No sugar. Start with the actions you created with your nutrition coach. Sorry. <laughs> it's, like, it's like I'm teaching. <laughs> Start with the actions you created with us, okay? Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask I'm, because someone most likely does also have that question, okay? And just again to review those participation points, okay? If you want to take a look, uh, again, I think it's in the left side of your folder. We have all six weeks of those points laid out for you. Okay. Um, so again, we have a point for the workout. We have a point for getting seven plus hours of sleep, hitting that water goal, logging your food, eating clean, so no processed food, sugar, alcohol, um, eating three balanced meals a day. Um, and again, we'll have um, opportunities for bonus points. So you're going to keep track of these each week, right? And then we're going to ask you guys to snap a photo and submit it to the group. Or if you're not, if you don't want to submit it to the group, you can submit it privately on the Healthy Steps Nutrition app. Are we doing a board? Sure. Okay. And we'll have a board here where we will keep a tally of where everybody is as far as point system. Yes, Bill. That photo. So if you take a photo at the end of your week of your point, completed point sheet, yes. And then you'll upload that to the Healthy Steps Nutrition app, send it to us in a message. Okay? Cool. Winner, winner. There's got to be a winner, right? So um, the winning team is going to be chosen based off one point and two, um, your results, right? So we taken measurements, we've done the in-body. It's not solely based off that, right? So you have to participate in the points um, system as well, but we're gonna take both into consideration, okay? Um, and if we all achieve our goals, then we are all winners, right? <laughs> Again, while you have your partners, okay, you have Kate and myself, and you have everybody sitting around you as well. Okay, so let's look at this as a team effort, go into it, support each other, and hit those goals. Yes. <laughs>